in one, or I could walk up to a small one and teleport to another small one. You can go to any Aetherite from any other Aetherite in that town. When you open it up here, you can see all of your options and you can click on them and the map will go there and showing you where you're trying to go. These are all of the Aetherite we can teleport to from this one that we're standing at right now. And if you have all of the Aetherite in that zone, it will let you teleport to the outside of that zone. So you can teleport to any of the gates rather than spawning here and then having to run all the way out one of the gates. Uh, we can just choose to click on them and it'll spawn us right outside of that town. This is very handy. The towns in Final Fantasy 14 are huge. They do a great job with scale and making the world feel massive, which is great for immersion. But sometimes when you're just trying to get from one end of town to another, this can be a daunting task. And this is where the eighth right crystals are going to come into play. They're going to help you get around a lot faster, a lot easier. Another thing you can do from this crystal is set it as your home point. As we discussed earlier, when we died, it sent me here because this was my home point. You want to make your home point the one that you're going to be going to most often. There's a couple of reasons for this one. It's going to be where you respawn when you die. Another reason is that you can teleport to it for free. You get a skill called return. You can use this skill every 15 minutes and it's going to take you back to your home Aetherite for free. From this Aetherite, you can also choose to visit another world server. Uh, if your friend is on another server on the same data center as you, you can also register a crystal as a favorite destination or a free destination if you don't want it to be your home point, but you know you're going to be going there often and you want cheaper travel. Speaking of getting around, once you start collecting Aether currents so that you can unlock flying in in expansion zones, you're going to unlock something called an Aether Compass. Be sure to put that on your bar so that you can click it at any time. It's going to tell you how far you are from an Aether Current. Once you collect all of the Aether Currents in a zone, you'll be able to fly in that zone. So if we click this compass right now, it's going to tell me right here in the middle, uh, 296 Yalms to the northeast is where the nearest Aether Current is. A Yalm is a yard. You can tell by the first letter. So if it says Ilm, it's an inch. If it says Yalm, it's a yard. If it says Mom, it is a mile. So just remember the first letter is what determines the distance, okay? It's it's pretty much always going to be Yalms. Sometimes during cutscenes, you'll hear them say Ilm or Mom. Like that. Yeah, I don't even know what that means. So we're going to go ahead and travel to the northeast here towards this Aether Current. And this is how you're going to find all the in the game. And now if I click it, it says it's 75 Yalms to the east. Okay. And then east of me here, we see it. Okay, that's what the Aether Current looks like. So we're going to go over there again. And we click here. Right click off. That's moving to the Aether Current. Now we've unlocked this Aether Current in this zone. And if you wanted to hunt the next one, you could click the compass again. And it says there are no nearby currents, which means you have all of the currents that you can get in the zone by simply running around looking for them. If you're still missing currents in the zone, it's likely going to be one of these blue quests. And if you go and you click on that blue quest, it will tell you if the reward is an Aether Current. And the way you check on your progress with your Aether Currents is you click on the travel button right here and you click Aether Currents. And this is going to tell you how many of your currents you have in each zone. You can see here in Lakeland, I have all of the Aether Currents that I can collect by exploring the zone. That's the green ones on the bottom. And then these yellow ones on the top are ones that you unlock through questing, either through the main story quest or through one of those blue quests that I just pointed at. So I'm missing one quest here. I already did the main story quest, so I know it's going to be one of the blue quests in the zone or nearby to unlock this Aether Current. If we look at the zone below in Ilmeg, I have all of the Aether Currents that you get by exploring, but I'm missing four of them that you get from questing. And you can see every zone in the game here, and you can see... Oh, look, in these areas, I have all of them except for the Churning Mist. It looks like I'm missing a couple. In this area, I've got most of them. Very useful for when you want to unlock flying in all of the zones in the game. You can choose to unlock flying as you're going through the zone, but generally you won't be able to fly in that zone until you've completed it because some of the currents will be locked behind the main story quest for that zone or that expansion. But it's insanely useful when the game tells you to go back to that zone later for another quest, which it always does. Another thing you might hear people talk about from time to time is the Hunter's Log. The Hunter's Log is an optional piece of content that you can choose to do. You can either press H on your keyboard or click hunting log right here, which is going to open it up and it'll show you how many of each type of mob you need to kill and where they're located. So if you hover over overgrown ivy, it says you need to kill four of them. And if I hover over, it says they're located in East Shroud 9 ivies. However, over the Ked Trap, it says this is South Shroud Upper Paths. So I would open my map and I would click Shroud then I would click South Shroud and it says Upper Paths. And so then I would go to the upper paths area and look around for that mob. 
the Ked Trap. All I would have to do is teleport to Quarry Mill and then run on over here to the upper paths and look for the mob. Every time you fill out one of these logs, you're going to get a little boost of XP and it's going to tell you exactly how much XP you get each time. It's not a terribly significant amount. It's not something you have to do, but you can unlock some pretty neat stuff by doing so. Because they've expedited leveling up so much in the early game now, this is more of a completionist type of activity than it used to be, as you used to need the extra XP to fill the gap in the main story quest level. So you used to go through the main story quest and you would get to a quest in the main story quest you couldn't do because you weren't high enough level so you needed to go out into the world and do fates or hunter's logs uh, to get the xp needed to continue progressing with your quest but that doesn't really happen anymore they've streamlined the main story quest so much now that you usually won't need to do something like that but if you do find yourself needing a little bit of extra xp or you just want to change the pace a little bit go ahead and start hunting things down in your hunter's log and if you're ever out in the world and you see this symbol over an enemy's head be sure to kill it that signifies that it is a mob in your hunter's log that you will need to kill to complete it. And since you're standing there and it's standing there, you might as well get it knocked out. Huns can unlock everything from mounts to currency to cosmetics and gear. All right, next let's touch on fates. When you see a symbol like this on the map, that means there's an active fate there. You can go there to kill the fate. Killing fates can give you things like mount speed, mounts, and currency for cosmetics and other things. All you have to do is walk up to the fate. It'll say fate joined. And then if it's a lower level fate than you, make sure you hit level sync. If you don't sync your level to the fate, you will not get credit for it. So very important to do so. Then go ahead and start doing everything. It'll start filling up the bar for you so that you can get credit for the fate. A lot of times there'll be other players here helping you. It's a good way to get some XP and some move speed currency for that zone. And upon completing it, it'll tell you that you got some XP and some currency. That currency is what you can use to upgrade your move speed in various zones. Next, let's talk about the Duty Finder. The Duty Finder is an incredibly powerful tool in Final Fantasy XIV that allows you to participate in pretty much any content in the game anytime you feel like it. You simply have to press U on your keyboard or open your Duty menu and then click Duty Finder. The first section of your Duty Finder is called the Duty Roulette. The Duty Roulette is fantastic for leveling up your second and third jobs. When you don't have access to the main story quest anymore for easy XP, you can do the Duty Roulette. What this will do is it'll put you into a random dungeon Dungeon, or leveling quests or trial or main scenario or alliance raid or normal raid right you choose the one that you want by checking them and then you click join and it'll throw you into one of those things and it'll tell you what you're gonna get you're gonna get this xp plus some bonus and then here this symbol right here says adventure and loot is a tank so this is what get for the bonus and the reward is listed here so if they're low on tanks and you sign up as a tank you get extra experience extra gill that sort of thing. Uh, you also get tombstones of poetics and stuff like this. You can use these to buy the best in slot gear for each uh, expansion. So all in all, your duty roulette is something that's very much worth doing when you're looking for XP, gill, or tombstones. Alternatively, you could come in here to queue up for a very specific quest. Let's unlock a dungeon in the realm of war. Well, you can come in here, queue up for that dungeon specifically so that you can get it done for your quests and then continue on with your main story quests. Same thing with Shadowbringer, uh, Stormblood, and so on. The content, if you see a grayed out box, that's content you don't currently have access to. And then we have Trials. Same thing. When you unlock Trials, you can queue up for them here in the Duty Finder. Just look for this little monster face and then check the box that you want to go do. Next, we have various raids you can queue up for. Sometimes 24-man raids, sometimes 8-man raids. And then finally, you have your various types of PvP that you can queue up for as well. But basically, the Duty Finder is going to be how you get into group content when you don't have a pre-made group of people to jump into it with and it works incredibly well don't be shy about using it all right now let's talk about navigating the map in final fantasy 14 because it's not immediately intuitive you can resize the map down in the bottom right corner you can make it whatever size you want there's plenty of customizing you can do for this thing uh in order to zoom out typically in mmos you would just right click but doing that just grabs the map and you don't zoom out so what you can do is you can hit this up arrow here in the top left to zoom out now we are zoomed out to see the entire area of Quarthus, right and then we have all these sub zones within it and then you can hit the up arrow again to zoom out even further now we're looking at the entire world map for the game of final fantasy 14. at this point you can click on another zone if you would like to look at the zones within that zone and then you can click on the wine port to teleport to that zone important quests that you're tracking will be on here so like if you're looking for your main story quest you can zoom all the way out and then you can see oh there's my main story quest alternatively you could just click on the main story quest up here right and the map will go there and it'll show you this and so then you can click on it and then you can click on new Gordania, boom and now i'm there doing my main story quests
Another way to get around the world is to hit your teleport button. That should be on one of your bars somewhere. And it will just open up a list of the world broken down by region. These are the same regions we were looking at there. Lanasha, the Black Shroud, right? And you can just look at each one individually and go there if you know where you're going to go. When you're a new player, these names don't mean a lot to you and you don't know what's in each place. So this isn't terribly intuitive. But once you've been in the game for a while, this might be a faster way to get where you're going. Or perhaps the game tells you to go to an area and you have no idea where it is. Well, you can come in here and you can look for that name. Another thing worth mentioning is the Hall of the Novice. The Hall of the Novice is something that you can do to unlock gear and cosmetics and also train yourself in your class and your role. Feel free to hit it. Just go to your duty, go to Hall of Novice and go here. If you feel like you wish you knew more about how to play your class or your role in the game and click begin and you can unlock some cool stuff. Okay, next thing we should talk about is the inn and the innkeeper. In order to find the inn, look for the bed on the map. And if you hover over it, it will show you an inn. This will be in all the large main cities. Go ahead and head to the innkeeper, right click on them. And before you step into your inn, there's always a mender right next door. So be sure to repair your armor before you go in here, especially if you plan on doing some glamming. And you talk to him, he's gonna say, do you want to go into your inn room? We'll say, yeah. Once inside the inn room, you have a variety of things that you can interact with. You've got a summoning bell to interact with your retainers. You've got a crystal bell that will summon the esthetician this will allow you to change pretty much anything on your character that you could change without plastic surgery in real life. So your hairstyle, your hair color, you know, your eyebrow shape, your lipstick, you know, certain things like that. You change your scars, I guess it's technically, but you know, it's, it's topical stuff. You can't change your gender or your race here, but you can change some pretty topical features. It's very nice that you can do this in game just by interacting with the station. You've got your toy chest, which lets you do a little mini game. Uh, you've got your armoire, which allows you to store items, remove items. Now let's talk about the glass dresser this is probably the most important thing in here and this is going to be all about your fashion portion of this game how do you see all those cool looking characters running around well a lot of times you're going to find gear in this game that looks really cool but it doesn't have great stats or you'll get a quest item that looks really cool but again it doesn't have great stats or maybe it's too low level for you but it looks way cooler than anything you've got right now that you're finding at a higher level uh, there's a lot of items in the game that just look really cool but they're not necessarily the best in slot for stats so this is where the glamour dresser comes into play what you're going to do is you're going to click on your glamour dresser and then you're going to look for the item let's say you found a uh, you found or you farmed a really cool looking uh weapon right and so you scroll through here and you find that weapon and let's see if we try this one on to make sure this is the one yes okay so we found this weapon we're like damn that looks great i really want my character to look like he's wearing this weapon all the time even though i'm wearing something else this just looks so much cooler than the boring weapon that i'm wearing so i would click this or left click it right and it says use a glamour prism to move this into your dresser and i'll say yes do that and by doing so it would now be here in this list of weapons that I could apply, right? So you have to use the Glamour Prism. It's uh, it's an item that you'll find in your inventory and you can purchase in game and you'll even get some of them as your quest reward when you unlock Glamour. Here they are right here. I've got 220 of them, right? So every time I add an item from here and I put it in my dresser, it's gonna cost me a Glamour Prism. But when I need to apply it, it's, you know, it's in here. It's not gonna cost me anything anymore. I can use it forever. So I would then pick one of the weapons that I put in here. So let's try on this one. What is this? Uh, no, you know, I don't like that one much. Let's see what this one is. Okay, we've got this one, and then I would apply the glamour. And then now my character, when I'm running around, it looks like I have this weapon on, even though the weapon that I'm actually wearing looks entirely different. It's a cool system. It's a little bit confusing to navigate um, this menu right here. Just remember that this over here is where you choose uh, main hand, off hand, head, body, hands, right? You can filter by sections of the body. Oddly enough, like it doesn't let you search only body. For some reason, it groups head, body, and hands. And so you've kind of got to skim. If you're looking through a chest piece, you've got to skim through helmets and gloves. And, and um, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me, but that's how they've done it. And then look for the gloves that you found that you want to try on, you know. Make sure to right-click, try on, and make sure it was the gloves that you wanted before you then click on it and add it to your glamour over here, okay? And then once you've added it, you just go to the corresponding ones. Like if I added those gloves, I would go here, you know, and apply the glamour. And then my character looks like he's wearing 
uh, these gloves, but he's actually wearing these gloves that look nothing like that. There is one thing to note about the Glamour system. Now, when you're low level, you're going to be changing gear a lot, which means you're going to replace these gloves, right? You'll take these gloves off and you'll put another pair of gloves on. And let's just do that for example, see what happens here. Uh, to my character. Actually, we'll do it with a chest. That's more obvious. Uh, we'll open up my inventory and we'll put on a different chest piece. Okay. So we put on this chest and now my look changed. And this is going to happen to you a lot when you're leveling up. You're going to put on a new piece of gear and it's going to replace your glamour that you just put on, making your character look all beautiful and sexy, right? And this is going to happen every time you ch every time you upgrade to a new piece of gear. Uh, the only way to fix this is to come back to your dresser and go to your chest, right? And then apply that glamour again. Um, you can also save glamour loadouts. So if you find a look that you really like, you can hit edit glamour plate and you can save into each slot, like your whole look that you want to wear. And then you can apply that to you every time you come to your room. So like if you go out into the wild, you go do some questing for a bit. Uh, you find a bunch of uh, gear upgrades, right? Every time you find a gear upgrade, it's going to uh, replace the glamour because the glamour is attached to the item, not to the slot, unfortunately. So what that means is every time you take that piece of gear off, you lose that look until you apply the glamour to the new piece of gear. Let's go ahead and get my look put back together here. Okay. There we go. Okay, so my character is looking like he was. If you want to dye a piece of gear, all you have to do is right click on it, click try on, then from here, right click again on the piece of gear and click enable dye preview. Now you have your dye screen open and you can see what it looks like if you were to dye any of the colors that you have available to you. Once you found the color that you liked, you would just simply hit apply and it would apply this dye to this outfit. Remember that you will have to have the dye in order to dye the outfit. You can buy dyes from various merchants in the game and you'll also be given them as rewards for various quests in the game. All right, let's talk about the group content that Final Fantasy XIV has to offer. First of all, let's talk about the dungeons. Dungeons in Final Fantasy XIV are woven into the story. And so you'll be doing your main story quests to unlock each one of these dungeons. There are also some side dungeons that you can unlock through the blue quests that we talked about earlier. The dungeon groups are four person groups with two DPS, one tank, and one healer. Each dungeon has three epic boss fights, and it's a great way to get everything from gear to mounts to minions. Minions are little non-combat pets that can follow you around if you choose to have one out. The next piece of content in Final Fantasy XIV is the Trials. This is eight main content consisting of two healers, two tanks, and four DPS. Trials are my personal favorite part of the game as they are an absolute spectacle. The way trials work is you spawn right in front of the boss you are meant to face off with. There is no trash, there's no filler. It's just one epic boss fight. The boss will usually transform and so will the stage that you're fighting on, creating the most epic boss fight experience I've ever had in any game. These bosses can give you everything from gear to cosmetics to mount and you can do them on a variety of difficulties with the normal basic difficulty being the easiest so that you can experience the spectacle without all of the difficulty with the option to turn up the difficulty to get things like really cool mounts the next piece of content is the 24-man raids. This will be three groups of eight heading through a giant dungeon with gigantic boss fights along the way. These raids aren't particularly challenging, but they are very epic. The raids will provide you cosmetics, gear, mounts, and story. All right, next, let's talk about the user interface. Let's talk about everything that's on the screen right now and what it means. Down here, we have our ability bars. You can have as many or as few of these as you would like on your screen, and you can change the shape of them to anything you want. Simply right click the number and it will change the shape of the bar. Then you can click that number and drag it wherever you want. You can click this lock to lock everything in place so you don't accidentally drag a skill off your bar in combat. You have your health and your mana bar, pretty straightforward. You've got your experience bar down here. If there's a moon here, that means you're going to be earning rested XP while you're in that area. It can be beneficial to log out inside of a town in order to get that rested XP. Here you can see that this part of the bar is a slightly different color than this part of my XP bar, and that would be my rested XP. In the bottom right, we have our you can see all of these symbols here signifying how full my inventory is. You've also got all of your menu options. You can click on this and we'll go through all of these here in a moment so that you know what each of these things is, as this can probably be the most daunting part of this entire game is, <laughs> is this menu system right here and learning your way around it, learning what you need and what you don't need. So we'll jump into that next. Over here, we have our quest, our active quest. You can either click on the quest name to bring it up in your journal. You can open your journal anytime by pressing J, or you can click on the quest description, which will open up the map and take you to where you need to go for that quest so that you can click on the nearest Aetherite and teleport to it. Again, the name opens up the journal, the description opens up the map. Very useful. You've got your mini map here. You can lock and unlock your compass so that it rotates 
or doesn't rotate when you do. I like mine to have fixed north. This is also going to tell you the weather. This is this is important here, the fair skies um, or whatever the weather might be, because there's certain rare hunts uh, or rare fates, for example, that will only spawn under certain weather conditions. So knowing how to check the weather in a zone is important. So if you enter into a zone, you just hover over this and you can see what the weather is. So you know whether the thing you're looking for is able to spawn or not. The sun here going around the clock is going to tell you what time of the day it is there right there. And you can zoom in or out on this if you want. Right here, you have the time, your connection, and your mail. It says, I have one piece of mail. And I'll show us how to check our mail here in a moment. In the top left, as we discussed before, you have your main story quest. And below that, if you have a job quest to deal, you can click on that to see where to go for your job quest. And that covers everything that's on my screen right now. But your screen won't necessarily look like my screen or anybody else's screen. You can customize the heck out of your UI. In order to do that, simply press escape and go to HUD layout. Here, you can change the location of 